Amen. So, my title of my message today is going to be called Faith Activated. Tap your neighbor and say, Activate your faith. Amen. And I'm going to be speaking from uh, the book of Mark, chapter 10, verse 46 and 52. If you guys could pull out your Bibles, if you guys want to read there, or we got it there, probably up on, no, on the screen. So, verse 46. And it says, then they reached Jericho, and as Jesus and his disciples left town, a large crowd followed him. A blind beggar named Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, was sitting beside the road. When Bartimaeus heard that Jesus of Nazareth was nearby, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And this is NLT version, just for you that are wondering. And verse 48 says, and the, and the crowd says, be quiet, many of them yelled at him. But he only shouted louder, Son of David, have mercy on me. When Jesus heard him, he stopped and said, Tell him to come here. So they called the blind man and said, Cheer up. They said, Come, he is calling you. Bartimaeus threw aside his coat, jumped up, came to Jesus. Verse 51 says, What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked. My rabbi, the blind man said, I want to see. And Jesus said, Go, for your faith has healed you. So I kind of want to emphasize that part. He said, he didn't pray for him. He said, just go, your faith has healed you. So I believe a lot of us here in this place that we're asking God for a lot of things. But the thing that differs this, this story from a lot of other stories is when Jesus would pray for them, he would lay the hands on him. But this story is a little different because Jesus didn't pray for the blind man. All he said, he said, go, your faith has healed you so I believe in this place a lot of us we're coming before God and God and we have everything we need for our miracle inside of us and God is just wants to activate that faith inside of you for your miracle for your healing for your deliverance in Jesus mighty name amen amen amen, amen. and see in the olden days when you had an infirmity like a like a a big or bad like blindness or here uh deafness or lame in the, back in those days in the society they would just really when you had something bad they would just kind of push you aside they didn't really have a cure for you so what they would do is they would kind of just like give you you know tea coffee something like that but they wouldn't really cure your thing or you cure your disease or the problem that you had they would only just give you a little something to to deal with it and so that's why a lot of people would always go into their into their places and a lot of even society some some people would, were be, would be killed if they knew that they had either leprosy or blindness or something like that. And so they would always push them aside. And that's honestly how our society is. Something that we can't deal with, we begin to push aside. We begin to shove to the back. And that's what happened back then in those days. And, but that's why in the New Testament, in the days of Jesus, there were so many miracles. There were so many healings. There were so many people that, that began to receive sight, that be, began to receive their healing. It's because miracles occur when humanity runs out of options. Miracles occur when you come to the end of yourself and you say, God, I've tried everything that I can, but I can't do it. And God, I've come to the end of myself and God says, where you end is where I begin. Where, you're at, where you run out your, your, your power, God says, this is where I start. And see, G blind Bartimaeus, he didn't always want to be blind Bartimaeus. No, he didn't, in the classroom, he didn't say, teacher, I want to be a blind beggar when I grow up. No, he said probably astronaut or something or whatever they want to be back in the day. And so he didn't always grow up wanting to be a blind beggar. You know what I mean? Blind and being a beggar, they don't, they don't, you, you could do one without the other. But it was a, his situation in life began to bring down his hopes. His situation in life began to bring down what he can hope for, what he could dream for, what he can ask God for. And it began to limit him. And that's what Satan wants to do. He wants to take you in the situation that you're at. And he wants to begin to limit even what you ask God for. And you say, and you, you've dealt with this issue for so long that you're going to say, God, I'm not, I'm not even going to ask God for, for healing. I'm not even going to ask God for a solution. This is just, I'm going to begin to be comfortable in the position that I'm in and the thing is how we know he didn't always want to be blind is because uh in the bible 
when they, when they, most of the time when they give you a name, they actually name you. That means you got to be some, somewhere in life there, somewhere higher in life. Because uh, like you look at the, the woman with the issue of blood, what's her name? The woman with the issue of blood. She didn't really have a name. Or the woman at the well, her name is the woman at the well. Because so being named something Bartimaeus son of Timaeus that means he was supposed to be somewhere in life he could have been a mayor he could have been a governor or a ruler or something he was something something should have been something in life but his situation began to bring down his hopes what he could dream for in God and the thing is what he began to do is he began to become comfortable in the position he is and that's my first point I want to bring to you guys is a curse of comfort seeing the story of Bartimaeus he began to they begin to bring him into the side of the road if you study there they brought him every single day to the side of the road and the thing with blind people is they like to be in a place that is familiar they like to be comfortable in the place because well obviously they can't see so they're blind so they like to know that if I count 15 steps here I'm in this place I know where I'm at I'm comfortable in the position that I'm in and the thing about comfort it's a very dangerous thing church comfort can kill your dreams more than a failure can comfort can kill your dreams more than a mistake can comfort begin to hinder what you can uh, dream for God and the thing is God doesn't want you just to be comfortable in the position you're in. God isn't a God of uh, just uh, comfort he wants to push you to limits he has great things in store for you but the thing with Bartimaeus is he began to be comfortable in the position he was in and just because you're comfortable in the position you're in doesn't mean you like where you're at. But a lot of us in life that we, we're in a position that in, we, we hate our job, we hate our life, we hate uh, everything that's going on in our life. But we begin to be comfortable in the position and we begin to accept the fact of where we're at. And a lot of the times you, be, you, be, you, you become something not because you wanted it but because of the situation chooses you. You didn't choose to become that blind Bartimaeus didn't choose to become he didn't want to be a beggar but his situation he made him choose that's what he can do and in your comfort zone like in the story of blind Bartimaeus when he would be on the side of the road he would every single day he had his coat and he had his cup and what the coat and the cup uh, uh, symbolizes is your your safety what you can you have what you could touch and it's what you know and it's what you have everything by you and it says it symbolizes safety so he would be on the side of the road every single day there blind and begging but what God wants you to do God wants you to begin to step out of your comfort zone God doesn't want you to be stuck in the position you're in and in the story of blind Bartimaeus when he when he began to sit there every single day he began to accept the fact he is where he is and he begins to accept the notion that uh that God isn't here that I wouldn't be I wouldn't be here if God exists and in the, see a lot of us we have storms in our lives and and in the midst of our storms we feel like God isn't here and that's the lie of satan he bits, he puts this notion in our mind that just because we have a problem god isn't there just because you you're going through this that you wouldn't be going through bankruptcy if god was with you you wouldn't be having this sickness if god was with you and he begins to put that in your head that just because you have a problem god isn't there do we have to begin to see sometimes we it's not always demons and, and Satan that we're fighting. A lot of times we're fighting our own comfort. We're for fighting our own flesh to stay in our comfort zone. And the thing is, Satan doesn't want you to come out of your comfort zone. Satan doesn't want you to begin to feel uncomfortable because the moment you begin to feel uncomfortable in the situation you're in, Satan knows you're about to fight for your freedom. Satan knows you're about to start praying for deliverance. Satan knows you're about to start believing for our healing. So what Satan doesn't want is for you to feel uncomfortable. Sometimes he even wants, he, he will let you come to church. As long as you stay comfortable in the position, in the situation, and you're never asking for prayer. You're never asking God for something. And you begin to stay comfortable in the position you're in. 
we have to know that this might be our condition but this is not our position in Christ this might be what we're going through but this is not who we are and we have to begin to believe that just because see us as believers there's something about falling into a situation that you begin to feel not at not as at ease about because you know who you are when you know who you are that's when you're able to fight it when you know what you're destined for you begin to fight that situation you begin to fight for it because you say yes I'm going through a divorce but that is not me yes I'm going through bankruptcy but that is not me yes I'm going through a sickness but that is not me when you know who you are you begin to fight for it life will only change when you become more committed to your breakthrough then you are committed to your comfort zone life will only change when you begin to step out of what your 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 familiar place and like Bartimaeus you're in your comfort zone but you begin to go to Jesus that's only when the healing comes that's only when the the deliverance the salvation comes the solution comes amen church begin to step out of your comfort zone just like the just like the lame man in the story uh, in the story of the lame man by the pool he was he was around a whole bunch of people that had the same situation and that's exactly what satan wants yeah because when you're around people that are going through the same thing as you when you're when you're poor you don't think to be rich when you're sick you don't think to be healthy because all you're around is sickness so satan doesn't want you to be surrounded by people that push you to believe for the impossible satan doesn't want you to be to for you to be around people that make you believe for a healing for a deliverance that's not what satan wants but we have to begin to surround ourselves and believe for the impossible amen church in the in the, in the story he said he called out to Jesus so they said so he called the blind man cheer up they said come on he is calling you Bartimaeus threw aside his coat so I want you I want you guys to see that he began to throw th throw away what's been hindering down him down for so long his familiar place and so he began to give up the cup and the coat for the calling and I want to encourage us today that when in you're in your situation that you're in you're in your comfort zone you're shaking that same cup you say you have that same coat around you that symbolizes your issues your your thing what you what you like have around you to keep you safe and when God is calling you you have to begin to let that go let that go you have to begin to let go of the cup and the calling and run to the calling of Jesus the cup and the coat and begin to run to when Jesus calls you you begin to run to him and leave aside your coat leave aside your garment because God says I'm going to begin to give you a new garment a garment of praise a garment of worship a garment of healing and the thing is the crazy thing is just like the story of the lame man when he began to come to Jesus and Jesus said no what's going on and all the lame man did is he began to give excuses to God he began to say oh I was trying to get into the pool so many times but never every single time I'll try to get into the pool someone get in before me but how crazy it is that in the midst of a God of such a great magnitude you can only bring him excuses that in the midst you have to be able to know the magnitude of the of the person of whose presence you're in because when you go there you begin to bring him something different the, when you begin to realize the magnitude of our God you know you begin to pray different prayers you begin to believe for the impossible you begin to believe for your dreams for your healing for your deliverance My second point is to begin to fight for your freedom. See Bartimaeus, when he was, he shouted once, son of David, have mercy on me. And everyone told him, hey, sh hey shut up. Stop talking. It's Jesus. Let him do his own thing. Let, just let him go. Just stop talking. You're always going to be blind. You're always going to be like this. Just, just shut up. And in that moment, blind Bartimaeus had to know, had to kind of step back and see, is this really what God has in store for me and in that moment blind Bartimaeus 
had the choice and the thing is you have two choices when Jesus is passing by because not all the time Jesus is going to come to you in this story Jesus didn't come to blind Bartimaeus he was just passing by and when Jesus is passing by you have two choices do I begin to step out into growth or do I begin to step back into safety and in that moment blind Bartimaeus begin to shout the more son of David have mercy on me and in that very moment Jesus begin to st stand still in that very moment when he shouted one more time because not every time and you guys know this not every time the first time you pray a prayer is gonna work but the second time he began to shout one more time it began to stop Jesus in his tracks and how amazing it is to know that we have a cry that we have a worship with us within us that stops the heavens that makes the heavens be, be, bend their ear towards our situation that makes the heavens know that I hear your cry that begins to when you cry out to begin to stop Jesus in his tracks that we have that kind of a faith to believe for your miracle and the woman with the issue of blood Jesus didn't pray for her Jesus was walking and then in that very moment the blind the the woman with the issue of blood she had a choice do I stay in my comfort zone because unclean people aren't allowed in public places but she had in that moment a choice do I do I step into growth it's gonna be uncomfortable it's not gonna feel good or do I step into safety and she began to run after Jesus and touch the the dirtiest part of his cloak and in that very moment, Jesus stopped and said, someone touch me. It's because when you begin to, there, there's two different types of cries. You know, when I, when I hurt myself, it hurts. But then there's a different type of cry when a mother loses her child. That cry comes from the innermost. That cry becomes, you become so desperate for the ch touch of God that you don't need, you don't need, a t you don't need him to touch you. That all you have to do is to begin to come into the presence of Jesus and your faith becomes activated and nothing, and nothing becomes impossible to our God. Every time that you begin to the funny thing is every time you begin to try to believe for your healing every time you try to believe for something people are always going to begin to try to shut you up and that's how it's always going to be when you begin to be passionate about something someone that is not passionate about something it offends them so they're going to begin to shut shut you up they're going to try to but in that moment you have to believe and you have to know because the moment you accept the situation you're in you're no longer gonna fight it if you begin to sit in your ashes long enough it's gonna kill you if you sit in your situation long enough it's gonna begin to pull you down so you have to know who you are in Christ in order to fight it so he shouted again and the thing something how he know this was a different shout is because every single day blind Bartimaeus he was in that same situation that same routine and and the, th the funny thing is it's the Bartimaeus is a lot of times just like us we we do the same stuff every single day wearing the same coat shaking that same cup in our lives and we completely hated but we began to be comfortable about inside of it and that's what Satan wants but he began to shout one more time. He began to cry out one more time to believe for his healing. And in that very moment, the thing is every single day, people put change into his cup. People put money into his cup. But it was until that one time that Jesus passed by and that was the ultimate change. That was the time when Jesus began to give him that freedom that he's cried out for so long for. You have to know who you are in Christ in order to fight for your freedom. To order, in order to know who you are in Christ. See, it was the same. It was the same type of same type of day, same type of issue that he was going going through. He was living his regular life, but in this very moment, church, Jesus began to walk by, and in that very moment, 
it wasn't just Jesus that walked by grace began to walk by hope began to walk by his grace and his mercy begin to walk by and when Jesus begins to walk by you have that choice to shout out to God and begin to begin to stop the foot of Jesus and say God begin to begin to look at my need and the thing is when you begin to worship when you begin to cry out to God God can't step over it God can't step over the worship when you begin to have that radical faith that faith that says I'm so desperate that I don't care about what people think about me this is between me and God I know God what God has done for me and you have the radical faith to cry out to God and the thing is the wonderful thing about Jesus is he won't always let everything be bound at once See, the blind Bartimaeus, he said, yeah, I might be blind, but Satan, what you didn't take away from me is my mouth. So with my mouth, I will worship God. With my mouth, I will declare freedom. With my mouth, I will declare deliverance. And with my mouth, I declare financial breakthrough. I declare freedom. I declare healing in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Satan, today we serve you and notice that you are no longer in our lives. In Jesus' mighty name. You have to begin to use and see, see the thing is God won't always God doesn't need what you don't have to create your miracle God only needs what you do have to create your miracle he said you have your mouth when you cry out I will reach I will reach out my hand to you when you cry out the heavens bend their ear towards your situation you have to begin to use what you have and begin to ha use that faith inside of you it might be small but you begin to use that faith inside of you to believe for the impossible. See this story, this, this thing might not be for everyone, but I believe there's people in this place that are going through things. There's people in this place that are going through situations. And I believe like in the, in the story of blind Bartimaeus, there was, there was a cry that everyone heard. But I believe that before the cry that everyone heard there was a there was a secret scream before he screamed to everyone there was a there's a secret cry the cry that when he went back home every single day he said God why me why God why does it have to be my son God why does it have to be my family God why does it have to be my fan finances and he began to cry out to God every single day and that's the cry that God hears. God says, your tears have filled up the cup. But today is the day that I'm walking by and that, that cup tips over. And I'm going to begin to answer your cry. I'm going to begin to answer your calling. What you, what you want. We have to begin to know who we are. And the thing is, in the story of blind Bartimaeus, Jesus says, go. Your faith has made you well. He even, he even said blind Bartimaeus, you can go. Your faith, you're already healed. But in that very moment, right after he said that, blind Bartimaeus began to follow Jesus. And that is, that is the ultimate goal is not for our healing, not for our deliverance, which is good. But it's to begin to follow the footsteps of Jesus. That when he does something to you, that you don't just leave it alone. But you begin to follow Jesus. That you begin to create that relationship with Jesus. And when you begin to have the relationship with Jesus you know you don't go back you don't go back to the side of the road when blind Bartimaeus began to got healed he began to follow Jesus and never again did he go back to the side of the road see a lot of times we have we've created that system in our lives where we're in that situation 15 steps here okay I'm comfortable with the situation I hate it but I'm comfortable in it and the moment we try to cry out for breakthrough and something doesn't happen we go straight back to it we go straight back to the alcohol we go straight back to the drugs we go straight back to the thing that we're comfortable with but we have to in the moment that when we cry out that we don't run back to that stuff that we begin to run back to the to the hands of God that we begin to run back to God amen church I believe in this place that we that God has something in store for us that God has something planned for our lives 
but we have to begin to fight for it it's a breakthrough but it's something that we have to begin to fight for Jesus died on the cross for it but Satan doesn't want you to be free Satan doesn't want you to have healing salvation deliverance but we have to begin to fight for our church we have to begin to worship we have to begin to cry out to God that we have to begin to in that very moment that we have to begin to drop to our knees and say the only way God I'm going to get through this I don't know how but I'm going to begin to worship you because I've tried it without your grace I tried it without your mercy and I am where I am because of that and God I don't I don't care whether whatever I go through just let me begin to stay in your presence let me begin to spend another moment in your presence and that's where he begins to mold you that's how he begins to take away your problems so if I ask every single person to rise up on their feet we, when we're gonna begin to go into worship right now I want us to begin to cry out to God I want us to begin to worship Christ I want us we all have our issues we all have our situations but right now let's begin to worship and cry out to God and say God I'm in the situation I am but I'm gonna begin to worship you I'm, I'm in the situation I am but God you are I look up to you where my I look up to the hill where my help comes from and that is you Jesus so I want us every single person if you guys can to begin to lift your your hands in this place let's begin to worship Christ let's begin to worship God and begin to give him the glory and the worship that he deserves in Jesus mighty name yes Lord we worship you this afternoon we lift you up in this place we sing to you Cause you are the way pray first of all for the mercy and the divine favor of God Almighty to speak for our situation. The Bible makes us to understand that when His mercy and favor speaks for us, that is all we need. The mercy spoke for the woman with the issue of blood and she was restored. 
the mercy and the favor of God spoke for Peter and Jesus Christ pick him up from sinking into the sea the mercy and the favor spoke for the crippled man and he was restored whatever situation that we may be in today we're gonna pray for the mercy and the favor of God Almighty and don't just pray the normal kind of prayer let it come from your heart the kind of prayer the kind of cry that stops Jesus Christ and says what do you want me to do for you let us pray right now say Lord Jesus Christ Lord Jesus Christ let your mercy and your divine favor speak for my situation in the name of Jesus Lord Jesus let your mercy and your divine favor speak for my situation in the name of Jesus right now begin to open your lips whatever that situation may be it may be a physical condition it may be a mental situation it may be anxiety and depression it may be nightmare setback hardship and failure it might be financial setback it may be headache backache knee ache whatever pain in your body in your spirit or your soul cry out with a cry of faith right now a kind of cry that will stop Jesus Christ to say yes what do you want me to do for you open your lips right now and begin to pray in the name of Jesus in Jesus mighty name oh son of David have mercy on my situation we ask you Holy Spirit whatever situation that we are going for whatever single thing that we're going through God we begin to cry out we say son of David have mercy on my situation son of David have mercy on my family son of David have mercy on my situation we believe, we believe for your mercy and your grace God to begin to come through in the mighty name of Jesus Holy Spirit we come before you God ask you got for your favor God to begin to speak for our situation God we believe for healing God for deliverance in your divine favor in the mighty name of Jesus Christ in the mighty name of Jesus Christ we pray in Jesus mighty name right now in this prayer we're gonna pray and we're gonna declare that I leave my comfort zone I leave the the things that I got used to it it's it's comfortable because we're used to it but it doesn't necessarily mean we like it we would we, we wish to have something better and so right now in this place we're gonna make a declaration of faith that I'm leaving what I'm used to I'm leaving the, the my, my tradition the things that I'm stuck in the cycle the repeating cycle of things I am going for what Jesus has for me I'm going for my dream. I'm going for my healing. I'm going for my breakthrough. I'm getting my fight on. I'm not giving up. I'm pushing forward in Jesus mighty name. Amen. And that's what faith is. Faith is action and faith is risk. I'm gonna go and apply for that job. I'm gonna go and start that business. I'm gonna go ask for promotion. I'm gonna go back to school and I'm gonna finish what I started. I'm gonna do what God called me to do and I'm gonna step out and I'm not gonna stay back. Amen church. Amen church. We are people of faith and that's how faith is activated. Right now put your hand on your heart and let's begin to pray. Let's begin to say I leave my comfort zone behind. I leave my what I'm used to behind. I'm taking a step of faith. I'm making a decision that I'm going after Jesus. I'm gonna cry out until I get my breakthrough. I'm not gonna get stuck in a rut. I'm not gonna get stuck in a routine. I'm not gonna get stuck in what I'm used to. I'm going after what God has called me to go after in Jesus mighty name let's begin to pray that prayer in the mighty name of Jesus Christ we pray right now Lord we step out of our comfort zone right now Lord just like Peter did on the sea Lord we step out of that boat Lord and we keep our focus on you Lord and we say it doesn't matter what waves or winds are around us Lord we step out Lord and we reach for you Lord we want new levels in you Lord we step out and reach towards our breakthrough Lord right now Lord towards our promotion Lord towards our healing and our deliverance Lord whatever you have in store for us Lord we need to take that first step Lord and we step out right now Lord we know that you are there Lord we know that you will not leave us nor forsake us you will be there to guide us and to carry us when it's heavy Lord we pray right now Lord begin to take us out Lord and help us to step out of our comfort zone Lord to reach you Lord to reach another level Lord 
a higher level with you, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. pray for and give an opportunity to people to give their life to Jesus I just want to encourage you with this thought if well what Zach mentioned is that if Satan has taken your sight don't let him take your voice your cry maybe you face something in life and it took something from you lost something don't lose yourself don't lose your cry don't let one situation kill your passion for God Kill your presence with the family in the relationship. Maybe one of your relationships died. Don't let that relationship kill your other relationships. Maybe something is happening with, in your family with your children and one of them is just going haywire, going astray. Don't let that kill your relationship with others because God, the, the God that helps you to raise the two will help you to recover the third one because the God that, that, that gave you the mouth he can restore the sight to you just because you lost something in life in one area don't let it kill the other areas don't let it kill your cry don't give up get back in the fight get back into pursuing and fighting and believing don't give up hope don't give up faith because God has an answer for you there's going to be a time and a moment where Jesus will be passing by and that area of your life will be will, will receive solution and healing in Jesus mighty name. Amen church. Keep on faith. Keep on fighting. Keep on moving forward. Amen. Close your eyes and bow your heads and right now is a time and moment that if you don't have a relationship with God or you lost it or you're maybe backslidden is opportunity to give your life to Jesus Christ. Life is short. Life is not promised. Anything can happen in any moment and it's important that you know that you know that you know that you have a relationship with God and you will be inter internally with Him. Or maybe you've been coming here first, second, third time. Somebody brought you here and you don't have a relationship with God at all. This is the good moment. This is a good time to give your life to Jesus. Maybe your heart is beating a bit faster because you know God is calling and He's calling to your heart. You will never be satisfied. You will never be fulfilled without Him. You will not have a purpose and meaning in life without Him. So if you one of those people, just lift your hands and we will pray with you. If you need to give your life to Jesus, this is a moment, this is a time. Lift your hand and we'll pray for you. In Jesus' mighty name. If you're watching us on live right now or re-watching this broadcast and you need to give your life to Jesus, comment below and our moderators will reach out to you. We will pray with you and we will introduce you to the greatest person in the world. In Jesus' mighty name. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you. We honor you. We thank you for a great gift of salvation. We thank you, God, that you're here today. That your mercy and favor is passing by. And today somebody is walking out of this place with their healing. Today, is walking out, today somebody is walking out of this place with their breakthrough, with their promotion, with their answered prayer in Jesus' mighty name. Lift up your hand and say, thank you, Jesus, for your mercy. Thank you, Jesus, for your favor. Thank you that you're passing by today. Thank you that you hear my cry today. Thank you that today is my day and my moment. That my life and my situation is turning around, God. I thank you, God, that your ear is not heavy to hear and your hand is not shortened to answer. And today is the day that you will bring out your salvation, your healing and deliverance. Father, I pray for every person that is here in this place that have needs for healing, for freedom, 
for breakthrough, for jobs, for opportunities. I pray that you touch them. I pray that you reach out with your hand and speed up the process God. I pray that you provide the resources in Jesus mighty name. Whatever the need might be God, I pray that your healing touch will locate those that need healing in Jesus name. And freedom for those that need freedom. We pray against anxiety, we pray against depression, we pray against every heaviness. Be broken in Jesus mighty name in this place. Father touch your people. Reach your hand God and save them, heal them and deliver them in Jesus mighty name. And if you receive it, shout Amen in Jesus name. Come on, let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ. Thank you for watching this content. I know this was a blessing to you. We would like to ask you to subscribe to our channel and click on the bell on our channel so that each time we upload something, you can be notified. Don't forget to share this content with your friends and family and on social media. We're so thankful to you. Better is not good enough. The best is yet to come.